Welcome to the Kidney Meridian Sequence Number 1 with Sandy Dixon. All right, take a comfortable seat and lay your hands on your heart. This sequence will address the inner line leg with slower flowing movements. As you find yourself in a seated position with your knees bent and feet apart, start the seated cat-cow, rounding the back, inhaling and arching the back, back and forth with your breath, slow and smooth. And after a few more times, start to articulate the spine one vertebrae down at a time until you roll and rest yourself on your back with knees bent. Bring the knees into the chest and raise the feet up. And with your inhales and exhales, raise and lower your, your legs with pointed and flexed feet. There's no reason to take the legs really low on this. We're just trying to warm up the spine and the core. So you may only want to drop your legs a few inches. Just try to keep the back pressed into the floor as best as you can. And now bend the right knee into the chest to keep the left knee hovering or up higher if the back is bothering you today. And then switch left knee in. And then right knee in. And once again, left knee in almost like a bicycle action, but pausing in between. Lift the legs back up and then open to a wide V. From here, flex the feet and try to externally rotate the femur bones in their sockets. Just a few times, again, warming up that inner line leg. Hold it here and breathe before bringing the legs straight up and placing the feet back to the floor. Now bend your right knee and hold the foot with both hands. Extend the left leg long on the floor, keeping that foot flexed. It's important to try to keep both hands here so you can bring the knee over to the right side of your body, maybe even touching the floor. Try to close the gap underneath the left hamstring. And now let's switch it, bringing the left knee in. Bend it, making sure you're holding both sides of the foot with a hand. The left side of the foot with the left hand, right side of the foot, or inside of the foot with the right hand. And now we'll bring that right knee back in, but curl up here, shortening those muscles on the front of the abdomen, lifting the shoulder blades off the floor and the head. And then try to straighten that leg to the best of your ability. You can also use a strap here, which I'll demonstrate on the next side. Hold it here, breathing and then bring that leg down. And let me demo demonstrate on this next side here. I strap my left foot, rolling myself up, contracting in those muscles on the abdomen, and then straightening that leg. You'll notice that my shoulder blades stay lifted off the floor along with my head. And then after a couple more breaths, I release both. I can repeat this leg sequence on both sides now, both the bent knee version and the straight leg version, before bringing the right knee back into the chest, holding it or strapping it, and then moving it open to the side, tilting my heel up towards the ceiling, the toes down to the floor, stretching the left arm out and looking towards that hand. All the same things apply here, and when we've done this in other sequences and other videos, trying to close that gap underneath that hamstring. Stay as long as you wish before switching sides. And be mindful, we're not trying to touch the foot to the floor. It's more about staying stable within the hips and pressing that gap closed from the hamstring down to the floor on the straight leg that's laying straight out from under us. After a few more breaths, we go back to that right foot, but this time we hold it with the left hand and drape it over the body. So it's going across midline here. I will take a block on this side and rest my ankle right on top of that block. And I try to drag my right sit bone down to that, the back end of my mat where my left foot is, lengthening out through that waistline. Now after a few breaths, I will bend that bottom leg and join it with the right leg. So I'm making an L shape with my body my ankle can stay up on top of the block, or I can put the block between my ankles and hold it there. 
My shoulder blades are touching the floor. Let's try this on the other side. You'll get a better view. First, I'm going to keep my legs flexed to stabilize out my spine muscles. And then I'll bring that left knee in, hold or strap it, and bring it across midline until it rests on the block. You'll see that my shoulder blade, my left shoulder blade, is connected to the floor. I'll take some deep breaths within that rib cage. And then I'll join it with my right leg so both legs are making that L shape. Now this is an important part of the meridian line of the kidney line as well as its counterpart, the bladder. So in, in this video I won't go and describe it too much, but if you are familiar with your meridians, it's really nice to be able to stretch sideline body, ab work, as well as inner line leg. Go ahead and extend those legs up towards the ceiling, flex the feet, and then raise and lower a few more times, nice and slow. And you may find that you're able to go a little deeper or a little lower than you did in the very beginning warm up. Now bend the knees, roll over to the side, push yourself up to a seated position, and then onto your belly. From belly, we're going to take the arms straight out and lift the thighs off the floor, lift the arms off the floor. In this modified locust pose, we'll try it again, but this time the hands will come to the side of the body, palms facing up, thighs lift, chest lifts. And you may find your own variation here. Just try not to compress in the low back, instead lengthen out, activating those abdominal muscles. This last version, I interlace my fingers and pull the knuckles back towards my feet. And then I release completely. Taking my right hand, I pull down on my foot, bringing it closer to the side of my hip or into the buttock area. Keeping my chest low, I'm not trying to do a back bend movement here. I'm just trying to activate or stretch out the fronts of the quads. I switch sides. And then I push myself back into my first downward facing dog. It's a time to stay, pause the video if you wish, and stay for as many breaths as you wish, trying to get long within the spine, squeezing inner thighs, and moving the thighs back before stepping into my triangle pose here. I stepped my right foot forward. I planted my hand on the inside of the foot, either on the floor or on a block, and I raised my left arm towards the ceiling. This is a utita version, a very extended version of triangle. So be mindful of your inner thigh, especially that kidney meridian that we're trying to activate. We just don't want to aggravate that inner knee line. Stepping back to plank and down dog, rest for a moment before trying it on the other side, stepping the left foot forward, planting that foot. See that the back heel is on the floor before moving my leg into a straight position for triangle. After a few breaths here, I'll turn myself back to that runner's lunge plank position down dog. Again, I can stop the video, take a few more breaths here and rest, or even rest in child's pose. Now I'm going to come into a virasana, knees together, heels to the side of the body as I lay myself down. For some of you, you may only be able to arch back a little bit. Anything that allows your knees to stay connected to the floor and you feel that deep stretch on the front of the quadricep. My arms are above head here and I'm holding on to my elbows, but you can easily keep those hands to the floor and just arch your back. Now from a seated position, I'm going to bend that left knee across my body, hug it, and twist just for a breath or two before coming into heron holding onto the foot or strapping it and extending it forward. Now each of these I've moved through rather quickly, but in your own practice, take your time through them. That's the best thing for the kidney meridian is to go super slow, be mindful and get more into that introspection. 
As I forward fold over my leg here, my other ankle is on top of that straight leg, pressing into the top of the thigh. And I can stay here, breath after breath, going deeper and deeper before trying this on the other side. Turning my body, sitting up tall and twisting before moving into heron, stretching that leg out as I hold or strap the foot. As I slowly lower, I slip that bottom foot out and put the ankle on top of the thigh. Now again, I've moved quickly through these poses here just for the video's sake, but this is your chance to watch it and then go back and just relax through each pose. If you stay here for a good two minutes or more, you'll see that the body starts to open and relax a little bit more. Now after that, come into Upavista, a wide leg pose. Walk the sit bones back. Hold on to the big toes, especially the outer edges, or maybe in the inside of the shin. And try to release the heart down towards the floor. This is another one of those wonderful poses to stay in. The longer you stay, the more you'll find yourself melting. Now we'll come in Kurdamasana, tortoise. I bend my knees from Upavista and I slide my arms under. As I try to straighten my legs as low as they will go, the arms are pinned under, shoulder blades moving away from midline, and chest melting towards the floor. I keep trying to walk my sit bones back before trying to arch through my back, pulling the belly button up into the body. And that sensation, you may start to feel the tightness in your shoulders, where we're taking that proverbial hard shell of the back and opening it up a little bit more. When it's time to release, we'll close the legs, bend the knees, and lean over, hinging from the hips, for Paschimottanasana. I straighten my legs to the fullest extent, maybe even putting a rolled towel or blanket underneath the backs of my knees. This last pose here was really meant for introspection. So please pause the video once again and stay as long as you wish before moving into this pose, the queen's pose or modified shoulder stand. You'll see that my head is off the blanket, my shoulders stay on as I raise my legs up and hold to the back of my hip structure. My hips are nowhere in line with my shoulders like a true version of queen's pose. Instead, I lean them, I dip them a little bit more into the cradle of my hands, allowing the toes to be right above my face. This is a nice relaxed version. You can even put blocks underneath your sacrum and rest on those, or rest your sacrum up against a wall if that's easier to hold the legs up for you. Allow the breath to return to normal before bringing the feet all the way over, if possible, for plow. And after a few breaths in plow, release your hands from the low back and start to roll down little bit by little bit until your feet land to the floor, knees bent, and come into Baddha Konasana. Soles of the feet together, knees apart. You'll notice that your back and your, your upper back are still resting on the folded blanket. From this position, I can go right into fish sitting on my forearms, a good counter pose to something like plow, allowing that chest to open, allow the throat to open, allow the cervical spine to get stretched in a different direction. You can do this two to three times if you wish before removing that blanket completely and coming back into your Shavasana. Reflect as you stay here how much tension you can roll off the body with every exhale. Sliding deeper and deeper into this full surrender mode. The kidney meridian is a water element, something that I may talk about in future videos, but for right now, just know that this is your chance to stay relaxed, smooth, and effortless to rebuild your essence. The mudra that I gave you here at the end is press, pressing the thumb to the middle two fingers or closing up the thumbs underneath the fingers. Either one of those mudras are a nice grounding and release before taking the hands to the heart 
and finishing your practice. Until we meet again, keep practicing. Namaste.